Good morning. Good morning and welcome to Whitney Friends Church. You know, God gave us so much sunshine this day. I think we put a little bit in our souls as well. Would you please rise and join us in singing Sunshine in My Soul? There is sunshine in my soul today. More glory than bright that shows in any earthly sky. For Jesus is my light. Oh, there's sunshine, sunshine, while the peaceful, happy moments roll. Is smiling face There is sunshine in my soul There is music in my soul A carol to my King And Jesus listening can hear The songs I cannot sing Oh, there's sunshine Blessed sunshine while the peaceful happy when Jesus shows his shining face, there is sunshine in my soul. There is sunshine in my soul today, for the Lord is near. The dove of peace sings in my heart, the flower of Blessed sunshine while the peaceful happens when it shows his smiling face. There is sunshine in my soul. There is gladness in my soul today. Hope and praise and love for puts me now. Sunshine, blessed sunshine, while the peaceful, happy moments roll. When Jesus shows his smiling face, there is sunshine in my soul. I hope you have that sunshine just streaming out from you. Jesus is the rock of my salvation. I hope he's yours as well. Sing with us. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. I believe in you, believe in you, for your faithful love to me. You have been my help. In time of need, Lord, unto you will I cleave. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You are my hope and my inspiration. Lord, unto you will I cry. I believe in you, believe in you, for your faithful love to me. You have been my help in time of need. Lord, unto you will I cleave. You are the rock of my salvation. You are the strength of my life. You may be seated. It's good to have you all this morning, and uh, could we have a word of prayer before we begin? Heavenly Father, this day, a beautiful day, we just thank you for all that you brought to us and for us. We just thank you and thank you so much. As we move on to our 
service this morning, Lord, we ask your blessings upon each one that has come. These things we ask in your name. Amen. Our announcements for today. Men's Bible study. Did you see the picture? Oh, yeah. That's on, that's on Facebook. <laughs> and there's, there's hundreds of them. Yeah, that is. 19 years. 19 years. But then there's also Don and Alfreda, whose anniversary is yeah. the same day. Same day. Same day. Yep. Announcements for this week. Uh, men's Bible study is still carrying on on Thursday evenings at 7 p.m. in the Fellowship Hall. Um, Brad... Bakley is leading that, and uh, another announcement, what a treat to have Tom and Rita back with us again. <laughs> Next Sunday we will have Sherry Sherbin with us to bring the message, and her father-in-law just passed away on the second, yeah, the second of June. And so it's going to be, it may be a tough time for her, but we'll just ask the Lord's blessing upon her. We are thankful to have Brad, Brad with us as our tech guy, and we need him. And if, if you have a chance to check on Facebook, you'll see that the Luhan family is out in full in Mexico. And they're doing just about everything there is to do. And we just wish them the best. Betty's three daughters are still in Hawaii. Wow. That's a trip. Yeah, <laughs> I understand that. Okay, I think that takes care of our announcements this morning. Uh, one more from our, our janitor had a, has a problem that came up and she wants some answers. I have no questions. Um, our church is very, very generous. We would give you anything that you needed. Somebody this week took the vacuum from downstairs and left their old broken one. And I mean, I don't feel I should have to throw it away. I mean, if, if you need a vacuum, ask. We'll buy you one. But, so, I'm pretty sure it's not us, but now I have an old broken vacuum to dispose of. She is not happy. Please stand, join us in, in binding us together. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. There is only one God. There is only one King. There is only one body. That is why we sing. Bind us together. 
together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. One word is death, that as one we might rise. So we are but one people. Is why we sing. Now bind us together, Lord, bind us together with cords that cannot be broken. Bind us together, Lord, bind us together, bind us together in love. We'll continue with, uh, you may sense a, a sunshine theme here. Shine, shine, Jesus, shine. Lord, the light of your love is shining in the midst of the darkness, shining. Jesus, the light of the world shine upon us. Set us free by the truth you now bring us. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine on me. Fill this land with the promise we play, spirit plays. Set our hearts on fire. Overflow, flood the nations with grace and mercy. Send for Lord, and let there be light. Lord, I come to your awesome presence from the shadows into your radiance. By the blood I may enter your brightness. Search me, try me, consume all my darkness. Shine on me. Shine on me. Shine, Jesus, shine. Fill this land. The Father's glory play, Spirit blaze. With grace and mercy, send forth your word, Lord, and let there be light. As we gaze on your kingly brightness, so our faces display your likeness, ever changing from glory to glory, mirrored here. May our lives tell your story, shine on me, shine on me, shine, Jesus, shine, fill the land with the fire, play, spirit, blaze, set our heart. With grace and mercy, send for the Lord, Lord, and let there be light. That's exactly what our country needs now. You may be seated. Gib, it's all up to you to introduce the man, the myth, the legend. You know, it's been a while since we've heard Tom. He spent a year with us, and we just loved him. And still do. 
But as he comes today, the Lord bless you and help you stand up here. Good morning. Good morning. Great to see you again. So good to be here. You may recall that, I, boy, it was, what, six, seven years ago that I was here. But I would have a tendency to take the podium and go down there. And then some Sundays I was bold enough to say, okay, now everybody sit over here on this side. And there was grumbling. There was grumbling among the saints. I don't know if you remember that. Great to be back. Great to be back. Thank you so much for inviting me. Uh, as I look around, many of you don't look any older. Uh, as I look in the mirror, I look older. Some, what's, what's up with that? I, I don't quite understand that completely. Rita's getting younger, as you notice, but we're getting older. I ran across some statements about seniors, and I thought these were kind of good. Lately, you've noticed people... Honey, the man, the myth, the legend. Okay, come on. All right. <laughs> Lately, you've noticed people that are looking younger than you are. Uh, have you ever found that? Sometimes I walk by a mirror and I go, who? who? That's me. That's me. This one I like. It would be wonderful if we could put ourselves in the dryer for 10 minutes. Yes. We would come out wrinkle-free and three sizes smaller. <laughs> That'd be a good one, yeah. Uh, it's okay to talk to yourself. You ever find, yeah. It's okay to talk to yourself because there are times that everyone needs expert advice. So next time you catch yourself, just, yeah. Yeah. Uh, this one, and I think this is for us guys. Even duct tape can't fix stupid. But it, can, but it can sure muffle the sound. <laughs> okay. Uh, why do I always like these better than you guys like these? Anyway, last one. Here's the biggest lie you can tell yourself as a senior. I don't need to write that down. I'll, re I'll remember it. I'll remember <laughs> No, maybe not so much. <laughs> Yeah, getting old, getting old is, uh, David Roper, a pastor friend of mine, has said many times, getting old isn't for sissies. And I think he's right, it's not for sissies. You've probably heard this quote before, but getting old is inevitable. Growing up is optional. So we're all growing old. I guess the question is, are we growing up? And I'm afraid sometimes uh, in a couple of weeks I'm going to be sent on the street. So I'm, going to get, I'm getting a little older myself. And, and sometimes I just think, you know, I am who I am. Why even try to change? It's just not worth it. No. But even as we advance in years, we can change. We can grow up. Not just physically but we can grow up spiritually. And I think that's a challenge for all of us, but it's a choice that we have to make. Somebody has said, and you've probably heard this, you make your choices, then your choices make you. I really like that. You make your choices, and then your choices make you. So the challenge to you and myself today, as we look at Galatians 4, is, uh, Are we going to make choices? Because those choices indeed are the very things that are going to make us. Uh, easy to get discouraged. I think easy to want to give up. But we can realize that we have choices to make and good choices they are. Let's see. Uh, let's kind of read this together if we can. Uh, recently, I was at a church, and everybody stood up for the reading of God's word, and they read it together. And I thought, yeah, let, we don't need to stand up. But here, we'll be looking this morning at Galatians 6, 7 through 9. So let's read it together. 
Do not be deceived. God cannot be mocked. A man reaps what he sows. The one who sows to please his sinful nature, from that nature will reap destruction. The one who sows to please the Spirit, from the Spirit will reap eternal life. Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Let's pray. Father, help this passage, a simple passage, but help this passage become real to our lives, not, not just in our minds, but in our hearts. And Father, help us as a result of our being attentive to you, help us to grow up and to be like your son. We ask this in his name. Amen. Amen. Well, there are certain laws and there are certain principles uh, of life, I guess. Uh, physically, I think of uh, the law of gravity, that if I jump up, and I would try to do that, but I'd hurt myself. But if I, if I jump up, I'm going to come down. That's just a law of gravity. That's the way it works. How many of you are gardeners? A uh, few of you. Uh, vegetables or flowers? Both? Okay. Well, I think you can see where I'm going with this. But, but if you plant roses, you don't get radishes. If you plant tulips, you don't get tomatoes. If you plant pansies, you don't get peanuts. Why? Here's the principle. You reap what you sow. So not only physically is there a cause and effect, but I think spiritually there's a real cause and effect to our lives. And we need to realize that we reap what we sow. That's a principle. Before he presents that principle, he says, don't be deceived. In other words, uh, don't kid yourself. Don't kid yourself. God will not be mocked. And it's interesting, that term mocked literally in the original language talks about the nose. And it's almost like turning your nose up. You know, kind of like, mm. you know, I, I don't need that. And that's kind of the word picture that Paul is teaching the people in Galatia. Don't you turn your nose up at God. Philip's paraphrase says it this way, don't make a fool of God. Sometimes we think we can make a fool of God if we don't realize that this principle, that this law is true. We will reap what we sow. A caution here. And as I was preparing, I thought, I don't know, should I talk about this or not? But, but sometimes when I hear a message, I think about all of the other people that should have, you know, that, that, boy, if only they were here to hear this message. Maybe, the, even if, maybe they are here, but now you're thinking, I just hope they listen to that message. No, 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 let, let, let's not go there. As we look at this passage, let's say, Spirit of God, make this real to me. Make this real to me, because he makes it real to us, then we can make it real to others. But that's the principle, very simply stated. You will reap what you sow. So it's tr true physically, but it's also true spiritually. And that's what he talks about in the next verse. So in verse 8, he says, To the one who sows to please the Spirit... In other words, excuse me, the flesh. If you choose to sow to please the flesh, what's going to be the result? Well, maybe let's stop. What's the flesh? What's he talking about there? It, yourself. Hmm? Yourself. yourself. Yeah. The flesh is also that old sin nature, the old man talks about in the New Testament. Put off the old man and put on the new. So the flesh is that sinful part of us, uh, ourselves. I, me, my, mine. I, me, my, my. 
some people, I'm afraid, live for I, me, my, my, and that's sowing to the flesh. You sow to the flesh. The flesh has passions and lusts and desires. Somebody said the flesh is characterized by selfish living. I like that. Selfish living. How do we know if we're living to ourselves? And I was thinking about some things. Do we harbor grudges? If we harbor grudges, we're living for ourselves. Do we nurse grievances when somebody offends us? Do we focus on that offense? Do we entertain impure thoughts? That's from the flesh. Do we want to get even? Uh oh, uh oh, I'm getting personal now. Do we want to get even? If we do, we're sowing to the flesh. Do we wallow in self-pity? Yeah, you've probably heard this, but some, I heard a guy say he was so low that he could sit on a Kleenex and dangle his legs. Well, again, I like that a lot better than you did. But anyway, sometimes we get low and we wallow in self-pity. Uh, Physically, again, we've been <laughs> uh, getting older, getting older. I think since I've been here, I've had this hip replaced. Then I had back surgery. Then I had shoulder surgery. A couple of years ago, I had a triple bypass. Then I had cataract surgery. About seven months ago, I had this hip replaced. Went in for an MRI a couple of weeks ago, and now they're going to go back into my back. And you just think, I'm kind of discouraged about this whole thing, to be honest. Come on. But that's just part of getting old. And if I sow to the flesh, what's going to happen? If I sow to the flesh or that old sin nature, if I sow to me, myself, and I, I'm going to reap destruction or corruption. One translation says, you'll reap decay and death. Urgh. Decay and death. So instead of growing up, you just grow old. And your life is, I'm afraid, characterized by decay and by death. In the previous chapter, we're in Galatians 6, but I think you're aware in the previous chapter, it talks about the acts or the deeds or the works of that sin nature if we live for ourselves. And it says that's obvious. They're obvious. They're evident. Everybody can see them. And then it lists them. And there's quite a list as far as that old sin nature. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery. Those are all sensual things. Then there's idolatry and witchcraft. Those are superstitious things. But then look at these social things. These are deeds of the flesh. Hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy. That's quite a list. If we see those characteristics in our lives, I think we need to stop and pause and say, what am I sowing to? Am I sowing to the flesh? Because if I'm sowing to the flesh, if, if I'm living a life of selfishness, then these are things that are going to characterize me. Then a couple other sexual is drunkenness and orgies. Somebody said we're supposed to worship God, love people, and use things. We have a tendency to use people, love self, and worship things. So, what's the principle? You reap what you sow. And if you sow to the flesh, to the sinful nature, that's what you're going to reap. But the exciting thing is that there's a contrast. We don't we have a choice to make. Again, we make our choices and our choices make us. But we have a choice to make. We don't have to continue to sow to that old sin nature. 
or to the flesh. We can choose to sow to please the Spirit. So am I going to sow to myself? Or am I going to sow to the Spirit? What's it mean to sow to the Spirit? I think it's to be more concerned about spiritual things than to be concerned about earthly things. More concerned about others than concerned about ourselves. That's what it means to please the Spirit and to sow to the Spirit. You probably know where I'm going, but again, if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap not death and decay, you'll reap life. Not only life, eternal life, abundant life, as it talks about in John 10.10. 10. That's the choice we have. We reap to ourselves death and decay. We reap to the Spirit of God, and we have life. In Galatians 5, again, we looked at the deeds of the flesh or the works of the flesh. Here's the fruit of the Spirit. So the deeds, the work, is something that we kind of generate, something that we produce. Fruit is something that comes from the inside. You don't walk through an orchard and hear the trees groaning and straining and... Dr no. Fruit just naturally comes. And if we're walking in the Spirit, if we're led by the Spirit, if we're trusting in the Spirit, if we're filled with the Spirit, if we're more concerned about the spiritual things than earthly things, this is what can characterize us. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Anybody want to be characterized by that? <laughs> That's a Christ-like life. He characterized, he showed love, joy, peace. But all of those characteristics are godly characteristics. What's the last one? We rarely get to that. We talk about the fruit of the Spirit. We go love, joy, peace, patron. But we never get to the last one. What's the last one? Self-control. Again, we make our choices. Are we going to sow to the flesh? Are we going to sow to the Spirit? The Spirit of God gives us the ability, the ability to use self-control. Are we okay, Brad? Okay, good. So again, do we live for ourselves? Or do we live for the Lord and do we live for other people? Quite a choice that we have to make. But you're aware of this, and this goes back again to Galatians 5. But it's often not easy. Uh, Paul writes, and he says, For the sinful nature, that old sin nature, that self, desires what is contrary to the spirit. Amen? Yeah. It really does. And the spirit, what is contrary to the sinful nature. So they're kind of at odds with one another. You can't do both. You're going to do one or you're going to do the other. The verse before that says very smallly. <laughs> so I say live by the spirit and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. So all those deeds, those works, we don't have to be characterized by those. We can live, walk, trust, be led by the Spirit of God. And we will not gratify or satisfy the desires of the flesh. It's a choice that we have to make. I was reading in the Gospel of John and this phrase just struck me. In John 6, Jesus is talking to the religious leaders, and he's saying, the Spirit gives life. The flesh counts for what? Nothing. Nothing. Sometimes the evil one tricks us and says, hey, you want to really experience life? Live according to the flesh. What does the flesh give us? Nothing. But I like that verb, the Spirit gives life. 
For God so loved the world that he gave. God is a giving God. The Spirit is a giving God. He gives life. So what are we going to be characterized? Somebody said either we're characterized by selfish living or selfless giving. If we're controlled by the Spirit of God, our lives will be characterized by selfless giving instead of selfish living. Are we going to coddle the self or are we going to crucify the self? Again, it's not easy. It's a struggle. Sometimes I think we tell people, oh, the Christian life is an easy life. In some ways it is because it's trust and obey. But in other ways, boy, it's a struggle. It's a battle. It's a war. They're contrary to one another. They're contrary to one another. So the principle is you reap what you sow. But in practice, it's often difficult. And we need to choose which one we're going to sow to. Last verse, last part, verse 9. This is a promise to me. Uh, this one has always bothered you? Okay, then we won't look at that and we'll go right on. I'd hate to have you bothered, my dear. That You get very weary. <laughs> like I said, it's a battle. It is. It's a battle. But he says, let us not become weary. Tired, exhausted, discouraged. Let us not lose heart. Even as we get older, let us not become weary. In doing good, what's the context? Sowing and reaping. To sow to the spirit is doing good. To sow to the flesh is doing bad. Don't, 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 don't become weary in doing good. Here's the promise. For at the proper time, you will reap a harvest. That's the promise. Now, when is that proper time? It's usually not when I want it to be. <laughs> God's timing is not my timing. <laughs> no. At the proper time. In God's time. Obviously, agriculturally, you plant something and you wait. You don't plant and then the next day harvest. You don't sow and then harvest. You wait. Sometimes four, five, six months. We're from southern Minnesota. And uh, it just, their growing season's about two weeks. And it, two weeks. It's right there. No, no. It, four or five months. You know, they have to wait. It's difficult to wait. Even as we sow to the Spirit at times, we have to wait and say, God, you create that love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, self-control. You produce that in my life because it's fruit. It's not something I can generate on my own that I can work up, but it's something that only you can work in our lives. So we will reap a harvest. We will reap a harvest. If what? Don't give up. If we don't give up. Does that help a little bit? <laughs> yeah, that's quite a promise. But it is hard to wait on the Lord. It is hard to trust in the Lord when his timing at times is so different than us. But if we don't give up, the promise is we will reap a harvest. And that harvest is fruit instead of works. What's the principle? You reap what you sow. I didn't put the practice. What's the practice? Sow to the Spirit and you will reap eternal life. What's the promise? In his time. Don't give up. Don't get weary. In his time. 
he will produce the fruit of the Spirit in your life as you trust him. Let's pray. Father, simple passage, simple truths, but as we prayed, hard for us to put into practice. So again, we ask by your Holy Spirit that this would become real in each one of our lives. And that as we see our lives characterized possibly by those deeds or those works of the flesh, that we would realize, no, that we're, we're sowing to those things. We're thinking about those things. We're focusing on those things. And instead, Father, we can focus on your fruit. Father, help us not to live a life of selfish living, but help us to be selfless givers. We pray it in Christ's name. Amen. A great hymn, I ask if we could end with the hymn, I Surrender All. Please rise. All to Jesus I surrender, all to him I freely give. I will ever love and trust him in his presence daily live. I surrender all, I surrender all, all to thee my blessed Savior I surrender all all to jesus i surrender humbly at his feet i bow worldly pleasures all forsaken take me jesus take me now I surrender all, I surrender all, all to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all, all to Jesus, I surrender Make me Savior, holy thine. Let me feel the Holy Spirit. Truly know that thou art mine. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. Now all to Jesus I surrender, Lord, I give myself to Thee. Fill me with Thy power, let Thy blessings fall from me. I surrender all. I surrender all. All to Thee, my blessed Savior, I surrender all. As a benediction, oops, as a benediction, I thought of 1 Corinthians 15, 58. My dear brothers and sisters, stand firm. Let nothing move you. Give yourself fully to the work of the Lord, because you know that your labor in the Lord is not in vain. Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen.